Oh, good morning. Okay, so uh, I just want to acknowledge my partner in, uh, long-term partner in working on this um, topic of reducing smoking while pregnant, Annette, who's stayed up late to be online and watch and be here. So I'm going to rush a bit because I'm not sure about whether I can fit this in, in the time. Um, basically, we have done a systematic review of um, looking at non-combustible tobacco and nicotine products and looking for any effects during preg pregnancy. Um, we, you know, the harms from smoking while pregnant are well known and low birth weight, preterm, you know, there's a, there's a long list. You could call it a syndrome. Um, the ideal, obviously, is abstinence from smoking anything, including cannabis, I'll just slip that in, or using any uh, tobacco or nicotine products during pregnancy. However, uh, quit rates, so women are smoking and then they find they're pregnant and then for a couple of weeks they try, or actually if they're shocked they don't try, then they try after a couple of weeks to quit and they keep trying throughout pregnancy. But um, over half are unable to maintain abstinence. So it, it's a real problem. Um, they're usually a small percentage of the population. And I do want to say this, for some reason, makes them a very low priority for research funding. And actually, there's not enough research in this area. Uh, they're seen as kind of a... a <laughs> Yeah, minority group, not worth researching, but I think that they are the most important group to research in terms of how to help them stop smoking. Unfortunately, among um, indigenous people, lower socioeconomic, um, you're seeing rises in the UK uh, and in some other countries of women smoking while pregnant. Among Māori, because we've been, our women have been smoking for um, 150 years uh, and our high rates of smoking, as you saw before, uh, we have about 50%. Uh, the ministry recently found still smoking while pregnant. So. Um, recommended quit methods, um, so there are countries that do support women to use NRTs, patches and gum while pregnant and you know at first we were like oh use the intermittent forms, the gum, but now you know they're like well there's really poor compliance with that so just stick a patch on them, uh, but are they risk free of risk? And then what about the risks of using these other non-combustible tobacco and nicotine products, especially now we're actually opening our minds and eyes up to the fact that there was a huge range existing anyway, and now there's even more. Um, the aim of our systematic review was to look at the uh, relative safety or harm of all of the non-combustible tobacco and nicotine products and all of the potential harm, harmful effects were included. And please follow me on Twitter. <laughs> Our method, um, we followed the PRISMA protocol and we also used, uh, we included doing a risk of bias and uh, adopted the Newcastle Ottawa scale to do that. And we included studies that compared women who were using any non-combustible tobacco or nicotine product and being compared with women who neither smoked or used any nicotine-containing um, product and or who were compared with women who smoked tobacco. We excluded uh, studies that were not written in English, um, and I'm lucky because I need can understand Swedish, Norwegian and Danish, and other languages were excluded. We excluded animal or petri dish or other cell reaction simulation type studies, biomarker measurement studies, nicotine withdrawal studies, cost effectiveness studies. We excluded attitude surveys, facilitators and barriers to cessation surveys and qualitative work like that. We included studies that were not about nicotine, and we included studies saying that they were about nicotine, but they were actually about smoking tobacco. Uh, we also excluded papers that had no method, um, or they just used no scientific method at all. So we also excluded opinion pieces and grey literature. Is there anything left? <laughs> 
this follows quite well uh, on from Ricardo's talk. Um, so the results were that we found almost 500 papers um, and we were left with 22 studies that were described across 27. I won't go in detail. This is going to be um, submitted soon for publication. I'll just point out the cigarette harms, not nicotine. There were 29 studies um, that you know, claim to be about the effects of nicotine use during pregnancy, but we're about smoking tobacco. So the study designs uh, the, the varied. Uh, we, there were four random, uh, randomised controlled trials that were looking at NRT. There were uh, 13 cross-sectional population studies, six were looking at NRT, five were looking at SNUS. There was one on Indian chewing tobacco and one on uh, South African chewing tobacco. Then there were four cross-sectional uh, non-population studies, uh, one on NRT, one on SNUS, one on Alaskan ICMIC, which is a uh, oral tobacco, you know, that's wadded up in. And there was one vaping study, although that was only an, an abstract, a fairly detailed abstract, um, but there was you know, sufficient information in it, results, uh, method, et cetera. Uh, there was one prospective study um, looking at SNUS and one observational study looking at NRT. So um, there's, you know, given the range of products now available, there's, obviously there's a gap starting to form there. Now, what did we find? The results uh, were that compared to non-smoking, non-nicotine-using women, non-combustible tobacco and nicotine product use during pregnancy may be associated with preterm birth, but it's less harmful than continuing to smoke while pregnant. The evidence was actually inconclusive regarding birth weight. There was weak evidence that non-combustible tobacco and nicotine product use may not be associated with AGPA scores, APGA scores, sorry. And there was not enough evidence to support claims of risk for malformations, cardiovascular disease, respiratory, neurobiological changes, and colic. And a lot of you, I think, would have heard, and it's, it's even been said here, um, that smoking, oh, sorry, use of nicotine products, tobacco products during pregnancy are associated with some of these things. But uh, if you look at the, you know, as we did, we looked at the evidence and the strength of the studies. There were a lot of limitations uh, in the studies, as Ricardo's outlined in a more general way, a whole range of limitations. We specifically found, for the studies we were looking at, uh, that the designs were limited by, they were comparing, you know, they were varied in terms of their comparison groups, and also there was variance in the products used. Poor study design and there was insufficient sample sizes. So what we concluded was that while we identified some potential risks of using non-combustible tobacco or nicotine products versus no smoking, no nicotine use at all during pregnancy, the evidence suggests that the risks would be reduced compared to continued smoking while pregnant. Much better to switch if you can't stop. Currently, the available evidence is not strong enough to justify denying women access or use of these potential risk-reduced alternatives if they are unable to stop smoking. Uh, more rigorous and ethical studies are needed and should be prioritised to more accurately determine the potential risks of using all of the different products that are now available uh, while, you know, while smoking during, while using them while pregnant. Uh, future work is needing, needed. I've got Communication 101. A huge issue is risk literacy. We've got to help people understand risk 
and relative risk. And that's been said before. Uh, the continuum of risk needs to be accessible to lay people, maternal care providers, and the healthcare providers, academics, and researchers. You know, researchers don't even understand this concept of relative risk. Uh, the ethics review boards and journal review process and editing of articles needs a complete overhaul to stop flawed studies going ahead in the first place and secondly, stop publishing them unless they're publishing what they did wrong and how to improve upon this, the research in the future. Future reviews also need to uh, look at articles that are published in other languages, for example, in Japanese. I had a look, there's not much in Russian, uh, um, or, you know, and I asked Sud, there's not a lot in India. There's just not a lot, there's not enough on this topic. So, in conclusion, the ideal, of course, is that women do not smoke anything, including cannabis, or use tobacco or nicotine products prior to becoming pregnant or while pregnant. But that isn't the reality. For women who are unable to quit using those products, the science is clear that continued smoking delivers immediate harm. Unlike the huge focus on youth who are looking at harm way off in the distance, this group uh, at risk of immediate harm right now. So where's all the research on them? There is insufficient evidence to deny supporting switching to risk-reduced alternatives. Switching could deliver immediate prevention of harm in utero for the woman's pregnancy and the infants. Those are my disclosures. I do want to try and stress how important, I, th I feel this whole concept of smoking in pregnancy, using tobacco and nicotine products in pregnancy is just being neglected by this community, the whole research community and tobacco control community. For us, particularly in tobacco harm reduction, this is really important. If the most vulnerable group should be switching to risk-reduced products. If we had support for the most vulnerable facing immediate harm to switch, then why wouldn't everyone else be supported to switch? I, I believe that, you know, please put some of your focus here and help clarify this. Kia ora, thank you.